And yeah, that's a uh, bulk of my process. <laughs> like, oh my god, demonology of the of the algorithm. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, but anyway, so he uses that that metaphor to talk about what the algorithm's actually doing. You know, they're feeding off of our desires and the kind of what you were saying earlier. Yeah, that it don't know so much of us that is reflecting. Our, ourselves to ourselves mm. and in a lot of ways what, what I've recently been digging into is dreams and I think this is very important like just like the the, the function of dreams is yeah. a lot of this is your shadow you know creating these elaborate scenes and if you if you don't realize what's going on then you get like lost in the dream and I think this is what a lot what is happening a lot with these like tidying the reality tunnels and like even at this like i see like this like weird bifurcation of like consensus reality like splitting you know yeah like yeah. Where, where language itself doesn't mean the same to like two sides of this mind that is getting qualified by like the algorithm into this binary of this side or that side um, yeah. And you yeah. see, so, uh, are you doing like, are you doing like dream analysis on yourself or are you, I, I've of course read, I think it was like maybe your most recent blog post or one pin to the top, but, um, can you explain that connection between, yeah. um, divisiveness and our like ling- linguistic and dream minds? Yeah. So, Back in um, my early days when I was uh, a Dharma bum, I also did Totec Dreaming, and I got really, really into uh, Totec Dreaming. You know, it's, it's it's like these advanced ways to do a lucid dreaming. But later, for my own self, what I, what I found out was learning to read the poetry of your dreams as this like gauge of where you really are, like deep inside. And what I would tell people too, before they would take psychedelics would be like, gauge your dreams. <laughs> like if, you're, if you're having like dreams that are really like disturbing you, is like, you may want to like clear that up before you get into the psychedelics or use the psychedelics <laughs> to get into that. Because like, you know, a lot of times early on, I, for whatever reason, and this is also probably why I use that symbol, um, the mushroom chose me. <laughs> You know, like, yeah. for, uh, I, I, out of all my friends, I was the one that, uh, you know, I wasn't really dealing them, but I would buy them in bulk and then, you know, my friends would buy it and you know, pay for itself. Uh, so, like, yeah. I was always getting invited to, to like, they'll buy it and then they'll want to do the shrooms with me. And so, like, I started to clock, like, every time someone would have, like, a bad trip. And they, they were always stuck on, you know, their, their own hangups, you know, prior to whatever's going on with us. You know what I mean? Like it was always mm-hmm. that. Yep. And so so I would always, t- cause you know, they've kind of like come to me advice cause I was always like talking about whatever book I was reading, you know, Alan Watts or whatever. Yeah. And so I, I would say, you know, something very easily. And then they said, well, I don't remember about my dreams. And they're like, just before you go to sleep, do a mantra. I'm going to remember my dreams and do that 23 times. <laughs> and then, yes. and then if you allow yourself, you'll remember your dreams. And it's just like, I, for me, I, uh, I guess I'm like, I'm trying to like simplify it. It's like, uh, like checking the weather or something. Like it's like this subconscious and there, there's way more to dreaming um, than what I'm just saying right now. But very simply, like your regular analysis of your own dreams, engaging your own dreams is kind of like this emotional undercurrent uh, weather because also what I'm combining it with is the classic of uh, Mayan count. And what, what essentially uh, I believe uh, what's useful about what the Mayans were doing mm. is they were they were trying to, um, because the best um, translation I heard of like what they were doing mm-hmm. is like the conscious spirit of the day. So they're, they're talking about, you know, galactic tonal cycles. And if I'm putting on my, what I have read of, ayahuasca and and (laughs) shamanic stuff and combining it with my own dream stuff and and knowing that they knew a little bit more about that stuff than i do yeah (laughs) okay you're because i know you're really talking about the progressions of of the solar cycles and and what they mean and if you're saying this is like the tone of consciousness of that day of like it reflecting into us 
so okay there's like an ocean of consciousness so these yeah. are like the tides and like this is what it goes to <laughs> and i'm like okay 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 and then i'm using that with my dreams because it gets reflected like what i'm saying about the, the more advanced stuff like i was doing the the mayan count and I, I was you know i got into a good practice of it and within a few days i had a dream of um Kukakan, which is the feather serpent. And it was so crazy because like I had this dream and like it was like the fabric of reality was like the wind, but it was this image, you know, like in psychedelics, it's like this image of this uh, feather serpent and it was dancing and teaching me and like giving me information. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I was just like, hell yeah. And uh, for everybody out there, this, uh, I smoke a lot of weed, but I ha I, I'm not on psychedelics or anything, yeah, right. but it's just deep dreaming. It's deep dreaming. <laughs> yep. you, you get more into it and you, you get, because it's not, after you get beyond the regular dreaming of your own shadows and projections of your own self, you get into this a collective subconscious and Ooh. these morphic genetic fields. And that's where, you know, you're tapping into the architects of the Mayans or whatever you, you want to get tapped into but you got to so, like uh, uh allow yourself to kind of like surf in those waters which is you know a little bit more advanced but yeah i mean right yeah. you i think you uh were you were talking about like maybe a specific ritual that you were using to get deep into the dream what is it uh mayan count oh yeah okay so um what i do is the yeah it's the mayan counting of the days so like the what they would call their shamans, like their translation were day keepers. And what the day keepers did it was would keep the count of the galactic count of where you are. But the one that I use is like a personal one. So it's like your horoscope and it's your relationship to the progression. So like uh, you get a sign, but uh, every day there's um, two different signs and they're basically correspond between like the sun and the moon. Okay. And then, and then, like your your orientation within those two orbits. So is this? It's like Mayan astrology. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And it, is Mayan astrology also like based on you know your birth time and and birthplace and all? Yeah. That? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, well, there 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 are different. Um, so like, I do in the classic Mayan count, which is like the first, and it's not like um. There's other, um, have you ever seen like the calendars, right? There's, there's more, there's like a, like a, like a, um, a societal calendar that's also within it. And there's like yeah. another calendar. There's all sorts of different calendars, but this is like the most basic one. And like what I referred to when I said the day keepers. So those were roughly the shamans and they were, they would have this own personal, um, reading. You know, mm. and so so they would ask. So say, for instance, they they will keep because um, so there's <laughs> if we really want to get into it, <laughs> there, there's 20 sides and um, 13 uh, other other controlling sides, which are the moon ones. Um, okay. But they, there's combinations of them. So what 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 would typically happen back in the day, right? Would be the day keeper or the shaman would have these threads of the calendar. And each thread would be a sign of a of a of one of the solar gods deities. But what what it really I, I believe what they were were was like what is the reflection of the like conscious tide of the day like what we were talking about. And right. so they would use use the mythical symbols and and give them a reading. And but the the people too that will have the readings so they will say what their birthday is so their birthday with uh, what today is and they'll they'll give them a general reading. But also too, what what a lot of which I'm really interested in is is like all of these like progressions in the main story, which is like the dance of the dead, and so like they would have end of the cycle ceremonies like to really like play out that whole mythology. So like mm. throughout the whole um, cycles, um, that's what they're like because also too, what I was getting into was the sound scrolls, and so like this stuff was written on um, beads. There, there weren't like words. And so like each of these like glyphs were um, these songs and, and these uh, oh. stories that like correspond to them. And everybody would know them because they would do them, you know, at the end and the beginning of each cycle. And so like this becomes like something, what I'm interested in. 
Um, and I think too, um, why I'm doing that with the um, like mandala narrative and imagination station is to really bring this this stuff out because I I, I had this dream um, once. It was a long time ago, and it, it was like what it started off like a dream where I thought it was reality. You know, I thought it was a regular day. Yeah. And and someone uh, I got a doorbell. And like it, the whole time, I I thought I was awake, <laughs> like I had no no, <laughs> no realization. And I get a I get a box like a FedEx box. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't order anything. That was the first thing that I noticed that was off. I'm like, that's weird. But it's not that weird, right? And so, and yeah. so I'm like, I want I wonder what's in the box. And then and then I open the box and it's like this fucking ancient bowl and it starts to like smoke and like there's like the whole like field starts to change and I'm like, oh my god, I'm not awake like i hope i'm not awake <laughs> like i did did i just suddenly adjust like peyote I'm like oh my god what did i what's going on and then so like every and then like the smoke starts to like dance and like it kind of like you know in in dreams you get like this intuitive knowledge where you're like playing this script and like you you kind of like consciously don't know but it'd be like you could just like go automatic mode <laughs> anyways yeah. so i kind of do that and, and like uh, consciously, I don't know how to do this ritual, but I just do it, right? And it's like this this blessing with a water and the smoke comes out and the sound comes out and then like this bolt comes up and it's like dancing and then it shoots out and it goes to the sun. And then it writes like this word, like this three like etched word that I notice and, and I'm like, fuck, that's weird. And so when I wake up, I write it down and I'm like, I can't get it out of my head. And, and this is, this, I'm like 25, 27. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a long, this is a long time ago. This is a ten years ago, uh, and so I Google, and it took me a while to find that. Like I, I almost gave up. I almost thought like, I, like I that's not a meaningful word, but I did find it, and it's it's called a kokin. I, I don't know the right pronunciation, but it, it's three separate words: a h x o c then kin k i n, and it's um, the Mayan god of. Uh, uh, music and poetry, mm. and and if you dig deeper, which I've had, the the Akokin flirts with the moon, <laughs> and it's like a it's like a a, a aspect of the sun god, <laughs> and so like that's what happened in my dream, like the bolt, this little yeah. bolt went, went back into the sun. I'm like, oh my god, that is so fucking funny, right. but it makes sense. But like at that, it, this this takes years for me to decode. <laughs> years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're like, so you're you're. Is that you? You mentioned, um, I, which I'm totally 100% going to do tonight. Uh, before you fall asleep, reciting to yourself, I will oh, yeah, remember yeah. my dreams 23 times. Yeah. Is that like a Discordian thing? Is that a Robert Anton Wilson thing, or is okay? I once read you know, like the science behind mantras. And I, I think the actual technical thing is 20 or 21. And then I'm um, I'm a big Robert Anton Wilson fan. So my own little cosmic make it giggle is to make it 23. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you so caught you're on doing, to that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing this little like mantra practice before bed. And then you're like having these wild psychedelic dreams. Yeah. And then yeah. you're um, decoding them over the course of years sometimes. And from mm -hmm. that, it sounds like you're able to extrapolate or interpolate or some kind of polite, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, uh, the like overall cultural forces from the collective unconsciousness that we all share. Uh, that's mm -hmm. like, it sounds like your, your impression of it is that it's bifurcating into separate consensus reality narratives that are like divided from each other and unattached to each other am i like am i getting that right yeah my 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 current uh interpretation of like what's happening is is something like that yeah i get like um you know every now and then i muse on on everything and you can't help but like um even in your your dreams like one time i had this like really funny dream and it also corresponds to paper bums where in the dream it's like post-apocalyptic, right? <laughs> and like everybody, like uh, everything's collapsed. Everybody's running around in the streets, like dazed and confused. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And That's and I'm pushing, I'm, I'm I'm pushing a cart full of books. <laughs> nice. Books. 
And I'm like, I'm like trying to move them and like not lose them. And I'm like moving away from it, like all the, the chaos, right? And then somebody goes like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, I got to save all these books. And he's like, why? Like everything's going to shit. Everything's falling. He's like, you don't understand. When you read a book, it fucking it does something to your mind. And I got to like preserve it. <laughs> yes. And then, and then so like, you know, I have these like dreams like that. And I, I I do like the paper bums and like it, it's it's something um what do you call it? William S. Burroughs says like if you cut up um, the present, the future leaks out. 